Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be checking out the RunCam 5. And just real quick, before we go any further, let's answer the two questions everybody wants to know. Does it suck? No. Is it better than a GoPro? No. So with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So obviously the RunCam 5 is supposed to be up and competing against the GoPro Hero 5 session here, which is pretty much the favorite FPV camera for HD recording. So in terms of size, it is a little bit shorter, but overall one of the nice things about it is that it actually fits the same exact mounts that the session uses. So, so if we take the mount, for the session, I should just be able to slide the Runcam 5 right in. There we go. It is a tiny bit looser than the GoPro, so it is like a tiny, tiny bit smaller, but overall, crash this a few times, no problems falling out of the case. So just looking at the camera, obviously very similar design to the GoPro. Uh, one negative, the micro USB, not USB-C, is completely exposed, so obviously this is not gonna be a waterproof camera, as well as the back has all these holes in it to show Runcam 5. A huge plus over the RunCam 3 is this sliding door here. You can see this houses a reset button as well as the SD card slot um, that just slides there. It's not going to fall off. It's not that stupid hinge they had on the RunCam 3, so that is very, very nice to see. In the box, it just comes with a manual, a couple battery straps, and a cable. Taking a look at the manual, we can see the resolutions that it offers right here. For this video, I'm only showing 108060 high quality video um, because that is what I use for racing and when I'm same settings for the GoPro session. I did actually just go onto the website and flash the newest firmware to that, so that's not hard. You just put on the SD card and it'll take care of itself. Uh, it is a bit disappointing to see they only offer 30 megabits um, per second at 108060. Honestly, you could just run 1080, 120 to get 60 megabit per second and then just run it at 60 frames per second and you might actually get a nicer video if you want to experiment with that. And then you can also do 2.7K 50 and 4K 30, which should do just fine and you get the benefit of the higher bit rate, 60 megabits per second there. Moving on to the camera, another downside is that there is no screen on here like the GoPro. It is extremely nice to be able to change your settings and going through things, if this will ever turn on there, uh, just this little screen, there's no such thing on here. The only way to change the settings on this, there is no Wi-Fi built in either. You have to take out the SD card and edit a text file on there. It's actually not too bad, but it is just really annoying. You can't really do it in the field. Or they just came up with a new barcode. I'm pretty sure they saw what the TBS Evo was doing with the barcode. So you can generate a barcode that'll save the settings. You just point at it. I haven't tested it, but I've heard that it can do that. The button is pretty simple. Um, you just press and hold to turn it on. Green is in standby, and then if you press green again, it will begin recording. Um, it's just flashing no SD card since I don't have SD. If you really quick double tap the button, so I can get it. No, it's just saying no SD card, but it will swap to uh, a blue light to take photos. However, I don't think anyone's going to be using this for photos, so that's pretty pointless. Um, let's just real quick take a weight on the camera. It is definitely lighter than the session. Non-removable battery as well, 72.4 grams, and then this guy is 54, so almost 20 grams, 18 grams lighter, which is definitely very nice if you want to get some race footage. It's not going to be quite as heavy, so that was enough talking about the camera. Let's just go right in and show some footage from it. So since there is no app, there is nothing, really all you're changing in the SD card settings is like the resolution and the bitrate and the field of view. Um, and I'm running this once again in 108060 in their XR, like super view basically, um, in high bitrate, so 30 megabits per second. I'm just running it in the max settings there. You can't really change in the sharpness, the contrast, um, any of the color, you can't really do any of that, but it's only a $99 camera. And if you're looking at this footage here, I was actually pretty impressed. It's definitely the best non-GoPro stock footage I've seen so far. Um, it was kind of an overcast day here with a little bit of sun, just running around the track to get a few laps with it. And real quick, let's hear some of the audio from the camera. <laughs> I'll make you listen to too much of that because it's not great, but it is far, far better than like the RunCam 3 or these other cheap cameras. They definitely have made some improvements in the audio and it is now usable. It's not as good as the GoPro um, sealed mics. It just, the GoPro sounds much nicer, but it is still usable and not too bad. 
So all the footage so far has been stock, so let me just go ahead and do a little bit of color grading and shadow adjustments. Uh, this is just what I would normally do to my videos, just making it look a little bit better so you can see sort of an idea of what results you can expect if you do want to color grade it, but everything else is going to be stock. Now this is in their super view, but as you can tell, the field of view just seems a little bit constrained, especially vertically. Not terrible, but definitely not as wide as GoPro's super view. So I also ran this in the rain just because we were waiting for the race to start back up and I was like, ah, let's get some rain footage in here. So here's just a little bit more of that. I'll include some audio as well. So yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for the Runcam 5 footage. Once again, I only am showing 1080p60 in this video, and from what I noticed overall, the quality is definitely very good for a $99 stock camera. However, on my computer, looking at the local file, I definitely did see a little bit of compression in the grass, just a little bit lower quality overall than the GoPro. I think the GoPro records at 48 megabits per second, maybe, and then the this Runcam 5 is at 30, so that is a lower bit rate, and then I'm exporting the video at 26 uh, megabits per second and then I'm uploading it to YouTube and I think YouTube displays it at like 12 megabits per second so yeah overall what you're seeing on YouTube is definitely going to be lower quality so keep that in mind so the overall verdict on the camera I am definitely pretty happy with it it is not going to replace a GoPro if you can afford a GoPro or you have a GoPro there's not much point in getting this camera but for how light it is and for how decent of quality it is for not a bad price I think it definitely is a worthwhile option to put on a race quad or to just get some footage overall. It's a very good budget camera. The only problem is there's not really a replacement program, so if you do break it, you're going to have to buy a new one straight up. And I'm not too sure of the durability. It feels pretty well made overall. I'm not quite sure. The glass doesn't look replaceable. There's no screws on it like the GoPros. But it's probably going to be easier to work on than a GoPro because it's kind of like an Apple product. You can't really open these things too well. And I know you can get sessions refurbished on eBay. This is actually a refurbished session. You can see it looks brand new. These are about $130 sometimes. It's a little bit, it's getting harder and harder to find them, but they still are available on eBay, but they are going to run out since it is a discontinued camera. So if you can find a refurbished session for about like $130, I would definitely recommend going with that. But if they run out or you can't get one in your country, I'm not, you know, shipping, etc. Um, the run cam is probably the next best option. I have not looked at the Foxier Box 2. It also looks pretty decent, but the biggest annoying thing with that is all the GoPro mounts I have, the Box 2, I'm pretty sure does not fit. So it is nice that you can use the GoPro mounts with the run cam since it is the same size. So that's going to do it for the video. There will be a link down in the description below if you're interested. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I've literally flown a quad once in the last time. Nice.